today in this lecture we are going to talk about concepts related to myogenic auto regulation of gfr and renal blood flow as we have discussed so many times in our last 3 4 lectures the auto regulation of glomerular filtration rate and renal blood flow and we explained that auto regulation of gfr and renal blood flow simply means that the renal blood flow and the gfr remains nearly constant despite of changing in the arterial pressure now we explained that when the blood supply to the kidney the pressure of the blood supply to the kidney the arterial pressure if it increases or decreases that increase or decrease is minimized or it is the effect of that is basically absorbed through the mechanism of auto regulation now here we explain that thing with this this different curves we explain when the arterial pressure increases the urine output curve increases when the arterial pressure decreases the urine output curve decreases and urine output decreases but if you look at these two curve the gfr curve the red color curve and the renal blood flow curve they are different they are not constantly increasing increasing with the increasing arterial pressure despite of the increasing arterial pressure the the level of the gfr and the level of the blood flow renal blood flow and glomerular filtration rate it remains nearly constant nearly normal despite of change changing in the arterial pressure but with very big change in the arterial pressure with very big change then the gfr decreases and blood flow decreases now we have explained this graph and these curves so many times in last few lectures but we explained that how this thing is maintained how auto regulation of gfr is maintained and we explain one mechanism the tubulo glomerular feedback mechanism a mechanism in which the sodium level in the distal tubule is sensed through the macula densa and that changing level of the sodium in the distal tubule basically tries to increase or decrease the filtration process and by increasing or decreasing the resistance in the afferent arteriole or efferent arteriole the macula densa with the help of tubulo glomerular feedback mechanism was able to maintain the gfr and renal blood flow near normal level and that was one mechanism of auto regulation the myogenic mechanism of auto regulation is very simple now in myogenic mechanism the blood vessels suppose for example now this is the nephron this nephron is basically taking blood through these vessels these are the afferent and afferent arteriole and the nephron is uh, basically taking blood through these vessels and the filtration process is occurring in the uh, glomerular capillaries filtrate is moving in these proximal uh, tubule loop of henle and distal tubule and urine formation is occurring now if we explain it in detail we enlarge this area if we cut this area we we this area look like this it this look like this because this is the distal tubule this is the distal tubule is shown here and this is the glomerulus and the afferent arteriole and efferent arteriole now if we enlarge this area further we see that the, these are the glomerular capillaries this is the afferent arteriole and efferent arteriole the tubulo glomerular feedback mechanism involve basically hormones and it is a lengthy process but the myogenic auto regulatory mechanism is very simple now the tubulo glomerular feedback mechanism works when the sodium level falls due to decrease in arterial pressure due to decrease in arterial pressure and when the sodium level falls in the distal tubule only then this mechanism the tubulo glomerular feedback mechanism tries to uh, bring back the glomerular filtration rate and the renal blood flow flow rate but in the myogenic mechanism the myo in the myogenic mechanism when the arterial pressure increases when the arterial pressure increases the increase in pressure basically stretch the vessels the increase in pressure stretch these blood vessels but due to stretch of these blood vessels these vessels basically try to contract they try to contract because stretching of these blood vessels stretching of these blood vessels initiate the the intake of calcium from the extracellular fluid into the smooth muscles now look at the smooth muscles here we have the afferent arteriole and efferent arteriole and here we have the smooth muscle so when the arterial pressure increases these smooth muscle as muscles basically contract and they do not allow they do not allow a lot of blood to enter into the glomerular capillaries so in fact the myogenic auto regulation process or the myogenic mechanism of auto regulation it occurs at the level of the blood vessels and in this mechanism the blood vessels themselves will absorb the increase in arterial pressure they will absorb the increase in arterial pressure by contracting whenever they are stretched due to high pressure when the arterial pressure is increasing these vessels will contract with the stretch of pressure with the stretch of the pressure the these these smooth muscles will contract and they will basically increase the resistance to blood flow they will increase the resistance to blood flow these vessels will increase the resistance to blood flow and they will not allow a lot of blood to enter into the glomerular capillaries so they will basically try to maintain the level of the glomerular filtration rate and they will also try to maintain the renal blood flow so they basically help in the auto regulation process they help in the auto regulation of process uh, sorry auto regulation of gfr and renal blood flow but in this process of auto regulation in this process of auto regulation the electrolytes 
the sodium, the renin, and the uh, GG cells, the juxtaglomerular cells, the macular densa, they are not involved. But the, arte the arteries themselves are basically involved. So that's why this mechanism is known as the myogenic mechanism of autoregulation. And this mechanism is also important in uh, regulation of GFR and renal blood flow. Now, some experts, some experts, according to the textbook, some experts like think that this, this mechanism, the myogenic mechanism of autoregulation may be involved in some other body parts, but may not be very much important in the kidneys. They may not be very much important in the afferent arteriole or efferent arteriole. But this mechanism pretty much exists and it helps a lot in resisting increasing the pressure. So that's all about myogenic mechanism.